Hey, welcome to The Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, AKA The Funny Brown Girl. Hey, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for joining us today. If you're a repeat listener, I can't say how thankful I am that you guys come back week after week after week. Um, this podcast is beyond my dreams, how well it's doing and how many people it's reaching and how many people reach out to me on a daily and weekly basis. It's just heartwarming and it's flattering. And I'm so glad that I've been able to provide this insight and knowledge um, for you guys who are in the creative space or want to be in the creative space to get to that next level. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, we dropped an episode with Jeff Friday, the founder of the American Black Film Festival, and it has skyrocketed. I mean, it is trending in Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. People have been reaching out about it. I mean, Jeff Friday has started the careers of many, many um, creators and influencers in the minority community. And so he is very well known and very well respected. And for me, he's played a huge role in my comedy career. And just to know that he played such a big role in my life and then I was able to share his story through the podcast and it was able to impact other people's lives has just been incredible for me. So thank you guys so much for listening to that episode and sharing that episode and writing reviews on Apple. A lot of great reviews came through on it. So thank you so much. Um, this week we're talking with Damon Williams, who is also a stand-up comedian, and I met him at ABFF, and we're gonna really talk a lot more about like dealing with coronavirus and COVID-19 in terms of being a creative and how to be a creative and what does that even mean. So stick around. Before we get into that, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about creativity and corona. And I talked about this two weeks ago, and I just wanna follow up on that because in the last two weeks, a lot of things have happened in my life. And so I'm very open with you guys about my life. And so I just want to keep you along on the journey. Um, there's a, there is a meme on Instagram that people keep tagging me in or sharing with me. And this is what it says. If you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, your side hustle started, more knowledge, you never lacked time, you lacked discipline. And I don't like this meme at all. And here's why. It's because it uses the word you. If you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, if you don't come out with a side hustle, if you don't come out with more knowledge, you lack time, you lack discipline. If you are going to make that statement, then it needs to be I focused. And here's why I say that, because everybody is on this journey very differently during this quarantine, during this lockdown. People are dealing with lost jobs. People are dealing with lost family members. People are dealing with not even being able to see their families. There's so much angst and stress around what is happening right now that I'm not gonna, as a creative and as someone who's always hustling, I am not even gonna put that stress on anyone that you need to come out of this with a new skill or a side hustle. If you need to lay in bed all day, then you lay in bed all day. If you need to just watch TV, then just watch TV, okay? Now, when somebody, when people keep tagging me this, I felt like I felt like I needed to say that. And I also wanna say it because I do have a Facebook community based on this podcast called Creative Breakthrough Community. And you can find it by going to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Creative Breakthrough Community, or just go to Facebook and search create a breakthrough community, or you can go to funnybrowngirl.com forward slash Facebook, and that'll get you there too. And I have been posting a lot of stuff around like what's available right now for people to occupy their time with if they are a creative. So I've got resource, resources on there about competitions that are coming up. There's a screenwriting competition coming up in May. There's the late night TV writers workshop um, application that's due, um, I think it's due this week or next week. Um, there's a lot of free online courses right now. I mean, there, it's unbelievable how many people are offering up their webinars and their classes and their courses that are usually $1,000 for free right now. Um, there's people who are offering classes like themselves, like we have this girl who wants to teach the guitar classes. And so I've been putting up a lot of resources on this Facebook group. And I've also been asking people like, what are you gonna learn this week? And how are you gonna spend your day? And what are you writing about today? And at no point in time do I want you to feel like I am putting that stress on you. That is most, that is for people who are sitting at home and not sure what to do with their time, who are fiddling their thumbs, who are bored silly, and at the end of this epidemic are gonna look back at this time and think I wasted all that time when I could have actually been doing something uh, creative or something productive or something fruitful. But you decide, it's up to you to decide which bucket you're in. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm sort of leaning towards the bucket of 
I'm just trying to survive. I am literally still trying to survive. I am, I still have not wrapped my head around everything that's going on. Um, and I'll give you an example of something. So I, I recently uh, was furloughed from my job. And when I say recently, today, <laughs> I got the phone call like an hour ago. Um, and I've been furloughed from my job and I've been at this job six years. And, and furloughed, for those of you who don't know, is um and don't feel bad if you don't know because it's just a word that i recently heard about and found out about is furloughed is a term that people are now using it's not being laid off so i have not been laid off i'm still an employee of the company but i will not be getting paid i will have access to health care so i will have access to my medical and dental benefits and when all this clears up and my company's back on its feet they can bring me back as a full-time employee there is obviously that 50-50 chance, I think it's a little bit higher than 50-50, that I could get laid off because they may not be able to bring everyone back. And I think that's the biggest fear. It's, the fear is not that I've been furloughed. The fear is that, what does that mean long-term? Will I come back or will I not come back? Um, and so that's definitely a stress that I have right now when I say I'm trying to survive. And it's funny because my career doesn't define me. If somebody says to me, what do you do? And they're like, oh, that's so cool. Is that what you are? I'm like, no, my, my job, my career, that doesn't define me. But I do feel that over the last few years, I've been defined by a few things, right? Like I'm Shireen Kassam, the funny brown girl who works in corporate America, who's a stand-up comedian, who hosts a award-winning podcast, who is in a loving relationship and who runs an online business as a side hustle. I'm that girl who's like, bam, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. And now we're in April, 2020, and I've lost three of those five things in the first four months of the year. And so I'm literally just trying to figure out who am I? Who is Shireen Kassam, the funny brown girl right now? Who, what is my purpose in life? What am I, what is God clearing the way for? And when I say that, I'm trying to really look at this from a positive spin. Like I can sit here and be like, oh my God, I'm unemployed and I have no job and I have no money coming in and I can't do comedy and like, what am I doing with my life? And like, why is this happening to me? Or I can say, okay, God is clearing out this space. God is saying, I don't need you to be wasting your time on these things. And if you're listening to me from work, I enjoy my work. I'm not wasting my time. But what he's saying is like, I'm going to give you this time right now, whether it's a month or two months or three months, and I'm going to give you this time to do something great. And what are you going to do with that time? What is something great that you're going to do? And I mean, that's a lot of pressure on me too right now. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what that is, but I am going to figure it out. And so I say to you guys, like, it's okay to just survive during this period. What I've really been trying to do is one, survive, two, get out of bed. And then three, there are so, like I said, there's so much free stuff on the internet right now. So many webinars and trainings that I've actually been trying to say, okay, I'm going to sign up for one webinar a day. And these webinars are usually an hour, hour and a half. And so it's like a good break in my day to say, okay, I'm just going to focus on this webinar today and learn something. So at least I feel like I'm still keeping my brain fresh and I'm still learning things. So like yesterday I did a webinar on Pinterest. Um, what is Pinterest and how to use it? Um, I won't lie, it was not the best webinar that I could have done on Pinterest, but it was free, so I did it. Um, then today I did a webinar um, on becoming a public speaker. Like, so do you wanna do you wanna be a speaker? And if you wanna be a speaker, there's a book. It's called The Message of You by Judy Carter, and she has this book and she's running free courses right now. So just go to themessageofyou.com and you can sign up for free and do her course. And I think her course is usually a thousand dollars and she's offering it for free with her on the course. Like it's not even pre-recorded. It's like a live interaction with her. So I did that. Um, she also is doing like a comedy workshop. Like, so you can sit with other people and write virtually and that's tomorrow. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, then there's this guy named Pat Flynn, who is the smart passive income podcast host. And he has a bunch of free courses and he's got one on how to build your email list. And so if you're not already, you should subscribe to my email list at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And from there, I send you guys a lot of opportunities and resources, um, which lately I have been posting more of that on the Facebook group um, because I know there's more people on Facebook right now than checking email. Um, but yeah, how do I grow my email list? How do I get more of you guys to subscribe to my email list? 
Um, so I want to take that webinar. And so there, I'm trying to like at least stay in that creative space and kind of stay busy so that I don't fall into this depressed mode of like laying in bed, like grumbling about what has my life become? Because I know that it's not that bad. I know when I look at other people, when I, when I see other people, there's other people who are really struggling, who are really hurting right now. And I'm lucky enough that I wasn't even laid off. I was furloughed, which means like it's, I'm still not like, I still have so much to be grateful for, if that makes sense. And I've actually started doing that too. I started taking a class on Coursera.org. It's called the well-being of happiness or the something about the well-being of and, and happiness. It's a Yale course. Um, it's actually one of their most popular courses right now. Surprise, surprise. I will throw it in the show notes and in the YouTube description. And I've been taking that course too, and that's totally free as well. And it's so, it's so interesting. One of the things she says in there is that you should be grateful for, you should say what you're grateful for every day. And it's funny, I used to do this exercise every night when I would go to bed, I would say, what is something I'm excited for tomorrow? And then what are three things that I'm grateful for? And since the start of 2020, I have stopped doing that. Um, and it just occurred to me like in the last week, like I was like, why have I stopped doing that? And I've like literally started doing that again. And not only do I feel like I'm sleeping better, but I'm waking up in a more positive mood and I'm just having a better day all around. And so if that is not something that you've already incorporated into your day to day, I highly suggest starting to um, go to bed. When you go to bed, a lot of people say do it when you go to bed. Some people do it when they wake up. Some people write it down. Some people just say it out loud. I don't think it really matters. Um, I just say it before I go to bed. And, and it's just like, what are three things that I'm grateful for? What are three things that happened today that I'm grateful for? And it can be as easy as saying, I'm grateful that I have electricity so that I can see. And then it can be more deep as I'm grateful that I've been furloughed, but at least I still have medical insurance because God knows I'm going to get hit by a car because I have been hit by a car four times. So like I'm, t I know the odds here, right? So, um, definitely do that. But I want to just end this by saying like, if I'm four months in now, I mean four months, I am four weeks now into a self isolation quarantine, um, literally got back from Mexico city and put myself into self isolation and I was work from home from work. And I've, I've gone out of the house. I try to go out of the house every day for a quick walk just to get some fresh air, but I haven't really been around people. Um, and I'm in week four and I won't lie. I'm, I'm still struggling with this whole idea of what's happening in the world. And I talked about this a little bit two weeks ago that we're all supposed to come out of this learning something. And we're all supposed to come out of this. I feel like as a more united people, a more united country. And I won't lie. I haven't seen it yet haven't seen it. And I say that because, um, last weekend I went to pick up dinner. Um, I've been trying to support s local businesses in the Orlando, Florida area. So like a lot of local businesses are struggling right now. And I decided I was going to go support one. Um, I had gone to the post office and on the way back from the post office, I saw this restaurant and it had a sign outside and it says we're open. So I was like, let me go in and support him or her, whoever owns it. And I ordered, I paid, I was waiting for my food. And all of a sudden six police officers showed up and I was like, I was on my phone. I, I didn't, I had, I was just like, whatever. And then the officer wanted to talk to me and long story short, the owner of the store accused me of stealing. And then luckily, so luckily, like fingers crossed, luckily, like karma, luckily these cops were like amazing. And they talked to me outside. I told them what happened. I showed them the receipt. And they were just like, this must be a misunderstanding. They went back inside, they came back out. They were like, we're not sure what happened, but we know you didn't steal. And then he, he, he uh, pressed trespassing charges against me, which doesn't really mean anything because he did it after the fact, which means I'm not charged, but I'm not allowed to ever go on that property again. So like, even if that property changes hands or becomes a different restaurant or like becomes the best wine bar in the city, I can't go back there because he has now pressed, put a trespassing warning against me. And that really upset me because here we are in a time where everybody's struggling. Everybody is just trying to make it through their day. And you, as it is, you don't know in life who's dealing with what, right? Now you've overlaid COVID-19 on top of that and unemployment and sick family members and not being able to see your family and businesses going under. And I was just trying to be supportive and I was just trying to go into this restaurant and be supportive and for whatever reason you felt like you needed to call the police on me and that could have turned so ugly for me like that I, what what really upsets me is that 
when he made that decision to call the police, he probably didn't even think of all the ramifications that could have happened if I had just gotten one police officer that may have had an issue with the fact that my name is an Arab name or that I am a Muslim woman. So when I say like, we just need to learn from this experience, we need to learn how to come together as a community, as people, as human beings, and just, and take for, and stop taking things for granted. Like he didn't have, he, he could have just been appreciative of the fact that I was coming into his restaurant, which was completely empty. There was nobody in there and spending money so that he could maybe pay a little bit of his debt off his rent off. And he chose to have hate in his heart. And in a time like this, I feel like the people who hate in their heart are the ones who are not going to come out of this with, with, with what God intended us to learn from this situation. And if you don't believe in God, then I still feel even if you take God out of the situation, we are all going to come out of this with a different perspective on life or a different perspective on ourselves or the people around us. And you have to let go of that hate and you've got to let go of whatever's holding you down during this time and just think to yourself, how can I be of use to society right now? How can I help somebody? How can I be there for somebody? Call that person that you haven't talked to in years. And if you don't want to call them, text them. I've actually been trying to do this every day. I scroll through my phone. Um, I literally have been doing this and people think it's so weird because I get these random messages back, but I'll like scroll through my phone and then get to somebody and um, I'll just text them like, hey, Shireen, just checking in. How are you doing? And I'll just send it. And I'm connecting with all these people that I've lost touch with. But this is like such a great time to do that. And so I leave you with this. Um, just survive. I just want you to survive. If you don't feel like being a creative right now, it's OK. Um, if you don't feel like getting out of bed, it's OK. But if you do feel like that you are falling, in, falling into a depressive state, if you're falling into depression, then I highly, highly suggest that you talk to somebody. And there's a lot of free resources out there to do that. Um, and I'll, I'll look for some of those and post them in the show notes. Um, and some of them maybe are not free, but they are pretty um, well priced. Um, and so make sure you talk to somebody. Don't let it get too bad because once you start spiraling down that black hole into that rabbit hole it's going to be really hard to get out and i can tell you that from firsthand experience so i i highly suggest talk to somebody reach out reach out to a friend uh, reach out to me if you want to talk to me send me an email slide into my dm tweet me we can talk um, i've got skype whatsapp i've got all that stuff um, again i'm going to make a a selfish plea if you are employed and you are making money and you're missing spending that money on starbucks coffee or lunch um if you want or if you if you're getting if you get something out of this podcast and you enjoy it please donate to my podcasting equipment um, i'm still trying to raise money to buy podcasting equipment so that i can continue this podcast you can do that at ko-fi.com forward slash funny brown girl that's ko ko hyphen fi fi.com forward slash funny brown girl $3 is the minimum. Um, if you donate $20, I'll get on a call with you for 30 minutes and we can talk about your creative goals and your journey and however I can help you. So with that said, this week's guest is Damon Williams. As I mentioned, I met Damon at, as I mentioned, at American Black Film Festival. He was amazing. He closed out the HBO comedy show competition that I was a part of. And then I had the opportunity to host for him at the Orlando Improv last year when he came through for a weekend. And he's such an awesome guy. And I've been trying to schedule this podcast for weeks. And so I'm so happy that he finally had time. Damon, with 25 years in the industry, Damon Williams is a former Subway sandwich shop owner from Chicago, Illinois, who began his comedy career at All Jokes Aside Comedy Club. Damon's previous television appearances include BET's Comic View dating back to 1994, including his one-hour special. He's been featured on BET Live, Comedy Central's Premium Blend, the Tom Joyner Sky Show on TV One, and HBO's P. Diddy's Bad Boys of Comedy. The funny man from Chicago even hosted several episodes of the legendary Showtime at the Apollo, following seasoned host and TV star Steve Harvey. In 1999, Damon performed for over 300,000 fans as the opening act of the highly successful Kings of Comedy Tour, establishing him as one of the elite comics in the nation. His popularity has provided him the opportunity to work with some of the biggest stars in the business, such as Aretha Franklin, Patti LaBelle, Luther Vandross, Ray Charles, Harry Belafonte, Chris Rock, James Brown, Jamie Foxx, Little Richard, and even President Barack Obama, where he served as a host for a campaign brunch. 
Damon is keeping Chicago on the map as co-owner of Riddle's Comedy Club, where he's providing a stage for new and veteran comedic talent. Damon previously held the funny chair seat as the co-host on the legendary nationally syndicated Tom Joyner morning show and is seen consistently on Chicago's number one day talk show, Windy City Live. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started.